the visa officers are now asking technical questions the other trend that i'm noticing is where officers are now asking did you write gre what was your score uh, did you write your application sop is it because most people in india use consultants and they do their application that's why they want to make sure that they actually did the application you would be surprised there could be people who have never gone to college in india who speak pretty good english who have faked their entire application coming up to the visa window and now they're appearing at the visa window and i've had applicants like that this person is going to stevens institute of technology so the officer she's asking him why do you prefer technological institution and she's like you didn't hear my question properly did you if i ask you a question about your gre and you have no idea about the basics of it at that point you're in real trouble you can't even say i don't remember and unfortunately it's common in india thank you wet for doing this i am excited uh, today we are talking about like this new trend that i'm noticing in visa interviews but before we do that let's do quick intro intro for people who may not have watched our video like who are you and uh, what do you do my name is Yvette Bunsell. I worked for the federal government in the United States for 11 years um, I was a U.S. diplomat in Mission India in consulate in Mumbai and U.S. Embassy in New Delhi I adjudicated over 40,000 visas and uh, recently in the last couple of years, I started a company called Udeti that does visa interview preparation with ex-visa officers. We have four ex-visa officers on our team and they worked all around the world and we help students and H-1Bs and L's and immigrant visas as well, uh, get their visa interview and be prepared for their visa interview. So yeah. Amazing. And uh, before we get into the meat of the uh, video, but I also want to mention if someone is in the process of preparing for their F1 visa interview or they may have rejection and a lot of them reach out to me and it's like, okay, how do we get in touch with you? So I'll put the link in the description and they do get discount. Uh, yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. They get a discount when they use that promo code. They can use the link and it automatically applies at checkout or they can go to checkout and use the UDJ promo for a discount on a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Amazing. And uh, and again, I know one of the things is rejection people, like people who have gotten denials, uh, they are more prone to get more denial, so might as well use this uh, services. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. All right, so uh, I don't know if you've heard this uh, yet from the students or not, but a lot of students reached out to me. Uh, this is specifically, at least in Hyderabad Consulate, What's happening is uh, visa officers are now asking technical questions. So typical questions are like, why this university? Who's funding you? Why United States? Uh, what's your plan, etc. Mm -hmm. But now, if uh, there, there was a student who was asked, what is LLM? Explain it to me. Uh, why AI? Why? What is the difference between C++ and Java implementation? Oh, you're going for cloud computing. Which cloud computing services are you in, most interested in? So what's going on? Like, why, why are they asking this question? It feels like a tech interview versus like an F1 visa interview. Yuri, do you have any guesses on why officers might be implementing it? Or are you surprised that they just started now? Uh, I am surprised why they just started now, but I, okay. my guess is, um, and this is my guess, that there, there's so many students going and they want to see if the students is legitimate, if they're going for masters, they should know these basic things. So right. legitimacy and also there were, I'll, I'll, we'll talk more about other type of questions where they are asking, did you write your own GRE? Did you write SOPs? Uh, did you, so it's an interesting thing that I'm noticing. So. But what are you, what is your take? It's really interesting because I thought that maybe these questions would be asked more universally and sooner, but I adjudicated visas in India from 2018 to 2022. And usually in both Delhi and Mumbai and even, even the other consulates, we ask the most very basic questions. Now for some other visa classes, like for pilots on an M visa or certain crew members we sometimes ask those technical questions to make sure that they really are who they say they are and they're doing that exact profession and we would have a script of those questions now having it be extended to students my guess is maybe in the past 
there's just a lot of different people going into a lot of different subjects and industries. And obviously, consular officers don't know them all. But the fact that they're implementing this means it's a way for them to combat fraud and actually be more fair in their adjudications. So if people are too scripted, they may want to try to get them off the script. Sometimes because officers rotate every two years, it could be that the manager started a trend or a senior officer that's training everybody else started a trend. I remember in Mumbai, my very first question would always be how many admits? And I happened to be the first one to go to Mumbai after the pandemic. And I had just been in Delhi. So I was training a lot of officers. A lot of officers were shadowing me and I would go to the window. And my first question would be, you know, how many admits? And I noticed that now 12 other officers had that same, how many admits? So it could be as weird and simple as that. Somebody started a cool trend or the manager said, I want you to ask more technical questions. I think it's very a very smart move by consular officers. Another reason why it may not have been implemented before or more universally is because those questions do take time, but officers could start to have a standard question in their bank. For example, if you're a computer science major, I'll have my standard question for every computer science major. Eventually they can streamline this um, and, and yeah, so these are my initial thoughts on this, UD. Yeah, yeah. And uh, w what advice, like now that we are noticing this, what advice would you give students to be prepared for such questions? Like, again, they may, like, they may say, and this was like one girl who said, like, I work in software engineering and we build AI product. And he's like, okay, tell me what AI product you build. And then it's like, oh, I do, uh, we use LLM. So it's like, so you're not really building an AI product, you're using an LLM. Uh, and so like they are thrown back as like, oh, mm -hmm. I didn't expect this to happen. So what's your advice to students who are now going to face these type of questions? You should be able to explain what job you're doing. So the job question is another common question. Tell me the specifics of your job and not allowing the applicant to just gloss them over again. The applicant, the, the officer wants to hear expertise, depth in that, in that area. So my advice is you should, first of all, know what you're talking about. So only putting things on your DS-160 that you can back up, obviously. If it's a technical question that's a little bit outside of what you actually do or what you're going for or something that you haven't learned yet, I would stand my ground, make a pivot, tell the consular officer, I may not know the difference between these two programming languages, but here's what I do know and this is what I have worked on. So again, just understanding that the officer wants to know that you are credible, making sure that you don't get thrown off is important. Um, yeah. Making sure that you're ready for anything. You can defend yourself, or even if it's an I don't know, you can figure out a way on the spot to um, to convince them that this is still who you are, that maybe you just are nervous, you had forgotten that point. Mm, yeah. And the other trend that I'm noticing is where officers are now asking, did you write GRE? What was your score? Uh, did you write your application, SOP, LORs, um, and uh, why do you think this is happening? Is it because most people in India use consultants and they do their application? That's why they want to make sure that they actually did the application? Or uh, And one of the students was asked, like, can you explain how did you apply and what was the application process? Okay. It's all to meet the pillar of are they a legitimate student? So consular officer have, have, it's like a three-legged stool. Are you a legitimate student? Are you mainly going for your education? And can you finance your education? Okay, so you're not gonna go for any, you know, you're, you don't have great uh, immigrant intent is, is one of the pillars, right? The finance is obviously obvious. And the third is, can you pass your classes? Are you a legitimate, are you a legitimate student? And so, if you're a legitimate student, you would have had to do steps in the United States that show that you understand the system. So if you would be surprised, there could be people who have never gone to college in India who speak 
pretty good English who have faked their entire application coming up to the visa window. Somebody else has done this application for them. Maybe they gave them a lot of money, just like basically everything they had. And now they're appearing at the, at the visa window. And I've had applicants like that. I've had clients like that. And you push them a little and you say, what's the difference between Northeastern and Texas A&M? And they're just giving you this blank look like what's Northeastern. It's like, it's the I-20 that you have. So from there, you start to piece together. There's no way that person has actually applied to this school. Same thing with the GRE. If you, so that could be faked. And if I ask you a question about your GRE and you have no idea about the basics of it, at that point, you're in real trouble. You can't even say, I don't remember because these are the basics that you're missing. And unfortunately, it's common in India. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there was another interesting question that was asked, and I, I'm assuming this also falls into these three pillar mm -hmm. question is this person has done research enough or not, but he was asked, so he, this person is going to Stevens Institute of Technology mm -hmm. so the officer. She's asking him, why do you prefer technological institution uh, or right. Institute of Technology? So he, this person goes and starts explaining he thinks the question is why Stevens Institute of Technology. So he's like, oh, I actually applied to these five university and out of this, there were these admits. And, and she's like, you didn't hear my question properly, did you? <laughs> and so now he's like really nervous. And so then he says, uh, can you repeat the question? He's like, I'm asking, why do you prefer technological institutes, institutions? And so then like he answered like, oh, because they are more technical in nature. I don't know how he kind of wrapped around and they have more research labs, et cetera. It's more uh, industry focus versus uh, mm -hmm. university type of thing. So is this similar? Like, would you say the same kind of thing? Like they want to make sure that this person is legitimate, legitimate and still did the research of why they choose this university? They want to get these students off their script. A lot of them, they want to see what's under the hood in a short period of time and they don't have time to waste. And these students just come with memorized answers. And the only way to get them off their script is to ask something that they're not prepared for so that yeah. they could see who this person really is. And it's really smart. And I, I encourage it. <laughs> I encourage it. <laughs> But also, I do understand that in India, these students, they do prepare for the answers, for the questions that they're expecting, right? Yeah. And they can get really nervous in the face of authority. There could be cultural miscommunications, just like the one you described. And so I can see how it could throw off legitimate and genuine students as well. And I know that they're really afraid. And I also know of cases where the question was, please describe your work duties or something very nuanced about the position that they put on their DS-160 and that person froze. And even though they've been working at that job for five years, just simply could not answer. So the biggest piece of advice we can tell genuine students is be prepared, again, for anything on your I-20, anything on your DS-160, and don't get nervous. Whatever you do, don't shut down. Yeah. Stand your ground. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I guess uh, you guys do mock interviews uh, in the visa prep. So that's where like they can get the feeling of like what it's gonna be like, and you could like counter questions and you know be the uh, the worst situation of visa interview, etc. But anyway, this that was it. Uh, any other final words and any other advice for students who are planning to go for their upcoming visa interview? If you're a genuine student, you you sh shouldn't be too afraid of the technical questions. They should be fair enough and still fall into your wheelhouse. And if they're not, if it's if the consular officer is the one who's wrong then just gently redirect and say, hey, um, that's not actually my field, or maybe I didn't clarify that I don't directly build AI products right now, and that's what I'm learning. This is actually what I do at my job, and just keep the conversation flow going 
um, I guess that's the best piece of advice we can give in such a general way, UV. Yeah, yeah, awesome. All right, and again, uh, everybody, uh, if you need extra help, uh, please consider doing the visa prep sessions with Yvette and his her team. <laughs> I'll put the link in the description. Discounts are available. Um, and until our next one. Keep smiling, keep hustling. Nice.